in the latissimus sparing approach, you identify the latissimus with the patient in the lateral position. Latissimus is easily palpated up underneath the arm, and then you can draw a line from the latissimus back to the posterior superior iliac spine, which defines the latissimus. The serratus will be coming in this way, and the idea is to be able to preserve the serratus and the latissimus and still pull it off the chest cavity and have access to the front and lateral portions of the majority of the ribs. So an incision generally paralleling the latissimus to be able to get access to the serratus. You can extend it through the arm if you want to gain further exposure. Um, and that defines the, the front latissimus sparing uh, incision. Can I have a scalpel? Thank you. So through the skin, all the way down. And this incision is going to be very generous, but it's important to recognize that you can use any segment of this incision along there without using the whole incision. Fair pickups. Yeah. So through the skin and down to the serratus. And I'll work the flap anteriorly to preserve the serratus. Once you've identified the slips of the serratus, then you can work back from anterior to posterior and develop, elevate them off as one unit. Off the chest cavity. You got a cob or an elevator or something like that.
once you've got the serratus lifted, which can be a little bit of work, the nice thing is now the serratus is still connected to the latissimus. Um, it's probably a good thing to show that. Just lift that skin flap up there. And then perceps. Here's the edge of the latissimus here, and here's serratus. So you've lifted the serratus and the latissimus up, so now you're under the whole serratus and latissimus, and the neurovascular bundles will be situated between the latissimus and the serratus down through this interval here, which you don't even need to go into. So now once you've elevated that, then you've protected the, the bundles, the long thoracic and the thoracodorsal. You keep working inferiorly. And then once you have the plane, then you can slip down behind it easily. And once you slip down behind it, you can get all the way around to the back without doing a tremendous amount of muscle damage. Um, you can work more distally this way to get to the most inferior rib, continuing to lift, lift the uh, slips off and then some of the latissimus distally. Um, in addition, the whole skin is also still connected to the muscle, so the whole flap here has good vascularity and you don't have to worry about creating a, a dead area. Now you can also work, so right now I'm touching the transverse processes of all of the ribs in the back. I have total access through there. Now you can also work, once you've developed that interval, you can also work down along the front. The obliques and the pec can be elevated anteriorly. Now we're at the costochondral junction here, anteriorly, and you can see we have complete access now to everything anterior and posterior without having damaged the serratus or latissimus. Just a couple of slips of pec are left, but those can be elevated off as well. Um, So I can touch the first rib up anteriorly here without having done anything other than take down the insertions of the muscle bellies. So I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, along the back, anterior, lateral, and posterior. And the scapula rotates posteriorly. Now, when you're working from the front to the back, as you get more posterior and you have fractures back here, these are the ones that would be ideal for a splint where you can create an entry portal here and work backwards towards the back of the ribs.